All right. Hey, everybody. Pastor Mike here. Hey, uh, wanted to say welcome to you middle school students and high school students, and especially you seniors, uh, feeling for you. Um, parents, adults, whoever's watching, uh, welcome, greetings. Uh, glad to see you virtually, right? So I'm sitting here in the youth room and uh, kind of looking around and it's quiet. There's nobody here. The chairs are empty. And um, I just wanted to say this to you. Uh, I miss you all. I miss you students, and I, I miss you parents, and you uh, Cornerstone family. I miss you. I really uh, am looking forward to the day, which I believe is coming, when we will be able to gather together again and walk through these halls and these rooms and uh, fellowship and eat and pray and worship and study the scriptures together. I, the day's coming and I can't wait. It's going to be an awesome day when we're able to gather together again. But in the meantime, uh, we're kind of doing this virtual teaching thing. So uh, go ahead and get your Bible out. Uh, maybe it's on your phone. Maybe you've got a paper copy. Whatever you got, get it out. We're going to look at Psalm 34 tonight. Now, here's why that's uh, a fun thing for me. I have um, some favorite musicians that I like to listen to, uh, some favorite uh, worship bands, and there's a group um, called Shane and Shane. They're from the South, which is awesome. Uh, I've seen them live once, and they have a song called Psalm 34. Uh, and it is a great song it's it's literally just the words of this psalm and um, the main line of the song says this it says i sought the lord and he answered and delivered me from all my troubles and that's really the heart of this psalm so let's go ahead and read it uh, together and then uh then we'll break it down a little bit psalm 34 now it has a, a prescript kind of tells us where it came from so it says that this is a psalm of David when he changed his behavior before Abimelech so that he drove him out and he went away. Now, if you're kind of curious about what is it, what's all that about, go to, uh, I believe it's 1 Samuel chapter 21, and you'll see this story of how David was fleeing from Saul, and uh, he flew, uh, flew, huh? fled to Gath, I believe it is, in front of this king Abimelech, and he pretended to be crazy. Uh, I don't know what all that means, but it said like he, he drooled and he just behaved strangely and the king thought he was a madman. And so instead of being captured uh, and becoming a, a captive of this foreign king, uh, the king is like, I don't need any more madmen. Get him out of here. And so he sends David away and David escapes. He, he, he's delivered. And then David writes, listen to this, verse one. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O little children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. 
when the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones, not one of them is broken. Affliction will slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. And listen to this. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Uh, you probably caught this as I was reading through here, that uh, it, it says kind of the same thing um, about three different times where it says, uh, I sought the Lord or I cried out to the Lord or I uh, uh, plead to the Lord. And it says uh, that he answered me all three of those times. And not just that, like it's great that God would hear our prayers. That's a really big thing. We'll talk about it a little more in a second. But it's not that he just hears, he also acts, he moves, he delivered. So you think about David in this situation where he's in a foreign land. He's kind of uh, in, jeopardy, in jeopardy of being held captive by this king, Abimelech. Uh, but David goes crazy and is, like, pretends to be crazy. and He drools and the king sends him away. I told you about that a minute ago. And he's delivered. He's saved. And he writes this psalm and, and he says, I sought the Lord. I prayed. I cried out to God. And he heard me and he delivered me. Now, that, that's a big deal. Let's, let's break this down a second. Uh, who is the Lord? Like, if, if I seek the Lord, who am, I, who am I seeking? I am seeking the God of the Bible. I'm seeking the one who is creator and master of all things. Think about this a minute. When it says, he answered me, who's he here? This is God. The God who said, let there be light, and there was light. The God who said, let there be a form and let there be water and land and let it be separated and he, he set the stars and the moon and the sun and the sky and he holds them in their exact position night by night. That God is the God who hears you, who heard David, who hears me. I don't know about you, but that kind of blows my mind. The, the God of the universe Here's little old me when I cry out to him, when I pray, when I, when I uh, make my plea to God, when I'm in need. The God of the universe hears me. Wow, let that sink into your mind a minute, that that God hears me when I pray. And it's not just that. And it's not just that God hears you. God acts and moves. God has a perfect plan. And so when we cry out to him in our moment of need or despair or trial or trouble, which we're kind of all in the midst of that, right? I mean, corona, right? Uh, coronavirus. Uh, maybe your parents aren't working. Maybe you're kind of wondering, where's dinner going to come from tonight? Uh, how are we going to make the, the bills work? Um, if you're a senior, you're probably wondering, how, what happened to the rest of my senior year? What happened to prom and how, how are we going to do graduation? And you're, you're feeling kind of gypped, right? And maybe there's some despair or maybe there's some frustration, dare I say, in the midst of your emotional state, in, in your situation. Do what David did. Cry out to God. Seek the Lord. Guess what? He hears you. And not only does he hear you, but he is the one who can act, who can move, who can do what is necessary to bring you out of that pit or that trial. Now, as I um, read, I said there's three different places. So that's uh, verse four says, I sought the Lord. He answered me, delivered me from all my fears. It also says down here in uh, verse 15 that the eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous. What does that mean? That means he's not turned away. That means he's aware of what's happening. 
Not only does he know it because he's God and he exists in all of time, but he's literally watching. He knows what we're going through. He sees it. And that's great, but get this. Look at the rest of verse 15. And his ears are toward their cry. In other words, he's watching and listening like a good father. He's observing and he's ready to hear the cry for help. Wow. Look at verse 17. When the righteous cry for help, what happens? The Lord hears. When the righteous cries for help, the Lord hears. See, see God, we would tend to think God's so busy he wouldn't hear me. Little old me in Sheraton, Iowa, who's going through this. No, no, no. See, you, you mistake God. God can hear all the prayers. All of them. All at once. He's God. Whenever and wherever, in the midst of whatever you're going through, when you cry out, God hears. That's encouraging. And not only that, like I've already said, this is the God of the universe who is able and capable and all-powerful and mighty who can do something about your situation or your trouble or your fear. Um, Let me read the last verse of this psalm to you. This is Psalm, uh, again, Psalm 34, verse 22. Uh, David writes here uh, at the end, he says, the Lord redeems the life of his servants. In other words, God redeems the life of the people who follow and serve him. And then I love this word, none. If you have a pen, circle that, underline it, big star around it. None of those who take refuge in him, guess what? They won't be condemned. None of them. So, So, you might be in the midst of a trial, a trouble for today, and that may be related to coronavirus. I don't know. It may be related to the fact that your entire family is home and, and you're not doing so well with um, siblings and chores and added schoolwork and all this. Maybe you're not dealing well with this current situation, but there is a trial and a trouble or a fear that every single person on planet Earth is in the midst of, and it's the fear or the trial of the risk of eternal death. See, we're all, we're all separated from God at birth due to our sin nature because we are born into Adam's sin. We all have this trial, this trouble in our life, this risk of being eternally separated from God. But for those who seek the Lord or who cry out to God for salvation. Not only does God hear their cry, but he delivers them. And you might, you might be wondering, well, how did he do that? How does God deliver them from that trial and that, that trouble? Well, God sent his son, Jesus, to planet Earth, to live and to do miracles and to show the way and to die and to be raised from the dead. Jesus went to the cross willingly, lovingly for you in obedience to his Father's command. Why? So that when you seek the Lord for salvation, you can be saved. You can be delivered from eternal death. That's really good news. That, that's like the best news ever. That's the news I need today. And not only that, but when I know I am not in jeopardy, there's no, no chance, and the word is none in this verse, there's no chance that I will be condemned if I have sought the Lord and have been delivered from death to life. There is an, a, a, a surety of my salvation and my eternity with God. That brings me great encouragement. That brings me some boldness. That means I can survive, right? And because I've entered into this relationship with my heavenly father, 
Now I'm considered right before him. In this verse, it says the eyes of the Lord are towards the righteous and he hears their cry. That means God's watching me now. He sees me. The God of the universe sees me where I'm at. And only that, but he's, he's waiting for that prayer. He's waiting for that communication. It's like a good father, lovingly waiting to hear from his child what they need next. That blows my mind. And so uh, maybe, again, you're in the thick of uh, coronavirus trial or maybe there's something else going on in your life. My encouragement to you, student, or maybe parent, or somebody's not connected to this church in any way, but you saw this video. My encouragement to you is do what David did and seek the Lord. There's, there's two senses of this in this psalm represented. There's the seeking the Lord in my daily, every day, I'm a human being living on planet Earth kind of thing, you know. Um, I need to seek the Lord for help and deliverance from the trials that come from just being a human being on planet Earth. But then there's an ultimate sense of all of us in this trial of this trouble of um, being eternally separated from God. And maybe what you need to do today is, is cry out to God. Ask him to forgive your sins. Ask him to deliver you from, as it says in the scripture, to deliver you from this body of death so that you can be free from fear and, and the trouble of being a slave to sin. Cry out to God for salvation. And you know what God will do? He'll hear and he'll, uh, he'll move, he'll act, he'll deliver you. Now listen, this is not the only time the Bible speaks of this and talks about uh, God hearing and moving and acting. I think about all kinds of times, like uh, when Moses is leading the people of of God out of Egypt. Pharaoh has finally said, get out of here. And Moses is leading the people away. And they come to the Red Sea and they're all like, oh, we're toast. They see the Egyptian army coming. And what do they do? They, they, they do two things. They grumble, which isn't so good. But then they cry out. God, save us, save us. And what happens? God hears. And he parts the Red Sea. And they go through it. And the Egyptian army is laid to waste and they're delivered. And then they all sing a song. I think of, um, right now I'm reading through 1st, 2nd Samuel. I think about all the times that the uh, nation of Israel uh, had to defend themselves or go to war against a foreign country where uh, they say things like, we're, we're afraid, uh, thing, we're, we're there totally outnumbered. Then no uh, feasible chance for victory, and yet they offer a sacrifice and they cry out for God's help. And guess what? God hears them and He delivers them. And He He when He goes before them, as it says, and He wins the battle for them. Wow! And then I think of the Apostle Paul in the New Testament. Wow! He on his journeys of mission to preach the gospel and to to start churches and to uh, uh, see people come to believe in Jesus Christ. He's in these cities, he's kicked out, he's beaten, he's mocked, he's stoned, he's whipped, lashed. And it says in, I believe it's 1 Corinthians, there's this passage called the God of all comfort. And in that passage, it says that uh, we despaired even of life. In other words, they were being treated so harshly that they thought they were going to die. That's how bad it was. They thought they were going to die. And what did they do? They cried out to God. And Paul writes there in Corinthians and he says, and we were delivered. And he talks about the joy of being delivered and the comfort that comes from knowing that God heard them and can deliver them. 
And he says, that comfort's not just for you, it's for everybody. Share it. So I'll leave you with this thought. Don't try to fix it yourself. Don't turn inward and just hunker down and say, I'm going to get through this. No. Don't just try to strain it out and use your own strength and just try to survive. In the midst of what's going on, cry out to God. Seek the Lord. And as his child, he hears you, and he's the God who can do something about it. He's the God who can move and deliver his children. And so go to him, students. Go to him. Pray. Seek the Lord. If you're a parent, same thing. Seek the Lord. Go to him, and he will hear, and he can deliver. Don't just try to figure it out on your own. God stands ready to hear. He's watching, and he's listening. That's good news.